तव कथात तप्त जीवन कविरीडित कलमशापम श्रवणमंगल श्रीमदात भुवि गृणंती भुरीदाजना भुवि गृणंती भुरीदा जना One day a holy man came to the bathing ghat bathing place on Ganga at Aridah We talked about seeing him Haldari said What shall we gain by seeing a holy man a mere cage made up of five elements Krishna Kishore heard about it and said what did haldari ask what would be gained by visiting a holy man by repeating the name of krishna or rama a man transforms his physical body into a spiritual body to such a man everything is an embodiment of spirit to such a man everything is the embodiment of spirit to him krishna is the embodiment of spirit and his sacred abode the embodiment of spirit he also said a man who utters the name of krishna or rama even once reaps the result of a hundred sandhyas shri ram krishna is speaking about the faith how the faith works in sadhana spiritual life of a man he wants to bring to our understanding if you have attained faith you have almost crossed the ocean of samsara faith in god faith in presence of the divine man is divine the bodily existence is just a cover which is going to fall off the inner self continues its journey and to reach back the source of to reach back the source the home we are by realizing god we go back to home we are in a place which doesn't belong to us nor has any lasting joy or peace momentary pleasures with lot of suffering and bondage so the, to transcend this and to go beyond so shri krishna is telling about faith faith of krishna kishore hmm he also said a man who utters just the name of krishna or rama even once reaps the result of a hundred sandhyas <coughs> every day at dawn and dusk people the hindus calmly sit be one with nature and try to recollect god's name and try their best to link to the divine to be linked to the divine is not possible at all times on one side the nature another side our internal states when i am getting up from bed the dawn at dawn and sleep at dusk after dusk 
So in India, <coughs> it goes well with the sunrise and sunset. In other countries like West Canada and all these places, the sunrise and sunset are not with the timings matching, and the numbers of hours we have to spend with respect to sunshine and sunrise is entirely different. Summers are large, long hours. Winters are long winters at night. Daytime is very short. In summers, lot of long hours of daytime, short night. So this may not suit our understanding, but as far as India is concerned, we people, the Hindus here, almost sunrise and the day is almost clearly divided into two parts, maybe half an hour, 45 minutes. The difference may come between the summer and winter, not much. So it looks with sunrise, the day begins, and with sunset, the day ends. Mm, so that is the understanding we have. And it is how, how we match with nature. When the sun is rising, its uh, influence on the nature and of, on the lives are different from when it is in the midday, when the sun is shining very bright. Mm. And we are very close to the equator. And how much of heat it would be producing, how much cold it would be in winter, all this, the very mar, especially South India, is very marginal. The degrees of temperature also very little of variations between winter and summer. North India, Himalayan region, there is a little larger, a little deeper aspect. Cold is little, goes to the beyond limits of Bering. Um, but in South India, it is not so. Even heat in North India goes beyond, sometimes very often beyond 50 degrees Celsius. So that is the thing. The dawn and dusk, the Hindus try to be calmly sitting with nature. Sun is setting, sun is rising. The day is merging in night, night is merging in day. So at that time, calmly they sit and just to watch the nature, offer their respects to the rising sun and setting sun, uh, arkhyas they give, and try to sit and meditate, uttering Gayatri. Gayatri is a prayer for illumination. Dhiyo yona prachodayat. Awaken my spiritual consciousness. I am fully conscious of this external world, which is not going to be with me, the moment I sleep, my bodily existence with all the external awarenesses drop away when I sleep, I separate from the body. Hmm. That spiritual existence I have, with, I want to see that the beyond, I can see or you can come in touch with it, understand a little deeper and deeper, slowly, gradually, only at dusk and dawn, when the, we are one with nature, nature is so favorable and not harsh like in the midday or midnight. It is very pleasant. So at that time, we expand in nature to be beyond. So this is Dhiyo Yona Prachodhya, awake my spiritual consciousness. So here we see Hmm. The, it is equal to doing 100 sandhyas. 100 sandhyas means almost one third of an year. So every day if I do sandhya uh, for about three, four months at a stretch, what would the, be my benefit? I just get by uttering just once Rama or Krishna. So that is the 
faith part of the spiritual life. He has that so much of faith is going to gain that as is one's man's faith, so is his gain. Hmm. One of his sons chanted the name of Rama on his deathbed. Last, you see, he has been devoted to this bhakti, devotional aspect of sadhana and personal aspect of God. Saguna Sakara. And on the last, at the time he is leaving the body, at the time of death, the son is there to repeat the name of Rama. One of his sons chanted the name of Rama on his bed. Ramakrishna is describing. Krishna Kishore said, He has nothing to worry about. He has chanted the name of Rama. But now and then he wept. After all, it was the death of his own son. Hmm. One, one of his son chanted the name of Rama on his own death, deathbed, not father's death. Krishna Kripushur said, he has nothing to worry about. He has chanted the name of Rama. But now and then he wept. After all, it was death of his own son. Nothing whatsoever is achieved by performance of worship, japa, and devotion without faith. Is not that so? Yeah. Yes, sir, that is true. Without faith, you are calling on God. It's of no avail. Yeah. Yes, sir, that is true. Master, I see people coming to Ganges to bathe. They talk their heads off about everything under the sun. The widowed aunt says, without me, they cannot perform the Durga Puja. I have to look after even the smallest detail. Again, I have to supervise everything when there is a marriage festival in the family. Even the bed for the bride and groom. Yeah. Why should we blame them? How else will they pass the time? Master with a smile. Some people have their shrine rooms in their attics. attics. The women arrange the offering and flowers and make the sandal paste. But while doing so, they never say a word of God. The burden of conversation is what shall we cook today? Could not get good vegetables in the market. The curry was delicious yesterday. That boy is my cousin. Hello there. How have you that job still? Don't ask me how I am. My hurry is no more, just fancy. They talk such things in the shrine room at the time of worship. Sri Ramakrishna is describing how people, what is deep within, comes out wherever they are. You see, a sadhaka, a spiritual aspirant in the world, when he is moving about, his lips will be moving. His heart is pinning, pinned to divine. He is uttering the mantra. He is doing all the activities. He is moving with people. But deep within is the aspiration for God. That aspiration expresses in and through his eyes and his movements, his talks. He cannot, anywhere any conversation comes up, he is brought to there, will be going on and Suddenly, he sees he has already taken a diversion and brought the mm, spiritual subjects into consideration. Mm. Similarly, worldly people in the world, you give them the, you talk, talk the highest truths. Uh, in no time, they just cover it and come to the, bring the topics of the worldly 
transitory unwanted things means yesterday what happened it is gone forever now yesterday's food was tasty it is no more there and it will be nobody is aware nor, nor the world wants this information and it go in from our mind itself within a day or two it disappears forever so such things they are spending time wherein the time is being consumed without attaining anything so shri ram krishna is you are you are doing you are there utilize it you are in the shrine utilize that time on calling on god you are talking something of the worldly which is going to bind and which is going to harm you instead of that you talk talk about god topic you talk about spiritual life talk about the rules and regulations in religion talk about the spiritual ideals talk about the divine talk about the divine people or you know, any saint somehow bring the topic and immediately you will get whatever the season whatever the time where where to what is the situation you are if you are linked to the divine all things will come out of your mouth so hmm people say uh, i all those things what shri ram krishna had said now uh, i uh, talk leads to everything under the sun without me durga puja puja cannot go on without me the marriage is in house i have to take care of every bit of things when you are not there in this world who took care of all that when you are going away now from the world who is going to take care the world moves without us if all of us are also not there the world will go on its own way yes yes sir it is so in the majority of cases as you say can one who has passionate yearning for god continue formal worship and devotions for long majority of cases as you say can one who has passionate yearning for god continue formal worship and devotion long shri ram krishna and dm were on now conversing alone hmm. formal worship and devotions also will not continue long if there is longing for god one who has passionate attached yearning for god continue formal worship and devotions for long shri ram krishna and am were conversing alone yeah sir if it is god himself who has become everything then why do people have so many different feelings this is these are the so common questions and we that we see everywhere people asking if god is there why there is suffering if god is there why is it is like this mm, this is not an exception it is the question of almost majority of people of mm. master undoubtedly god exists in all beings as the all pervading spirit but the manifestation of his power are different in different beings the manifestation of power god is present his power manifestation now i am now suppose i am in military uh, i have come to your home i need not manifest any of my powers of military there or i am an engineer or a doctor i am going i have gone to the friend's house to meet him and i need not express or there is no opportunity also 
to use my knowledge of being a doctor or an engineer. So our powers remain with a, without expression. In some places, there is manifestation of power of knowledge. In others, power of ignorance. Both are powers. Ignorance also is a power which is keeping suppressed from his evolution. In some places, there is greater manifestation of power than in others. Don't you see that among human beings, there are cheats and gamblers. To say nothing of men who are like tigers. I think of them as the cheat god, tiger god. Don't you see among human beings, there are cheats and gamblers. To say nothing of man, men who are like tigers, I think of them as cheat god and tiger god. Hmm. They will be searching for prey. How the tiger searches for a prey? Just they will be watching for who, whom can I cheat, whom can I deceive, from whom I can snatch away. That, that people are watching. Particular type of people. Hmm. They are constantly watching those things. Hmm. So they are also God is present everywhere. God is present in them also. So there you see God as cheat. Hmm. The cheat God and the tiger God. Thakur uses the term. Hmm. Yeah, with a smile. We should salute them from a distance. If we go near the tiger God, and embrace him, he may devour us, master. He and his power, Brahman and its power, nothing else exists but them. The whole world is a combination of Chaitanya and Chit Shakti. Hmm. The, he and his power, God and his power, Brahman and Shakti, nothing else but this. Whatever you see in this world, even actions, thoughts, feelings, material world, everything is a combination of Chaitanya and Chit Shakti. The Adhara is the Chaitanya, Chit manifestation is Chit Shakti. Now, chair itself, it has existence. That existence is Shiva and the power to hold me is Shakti. Hmm. We can say Parvati or anything. It's a combination of the two, Chit Shakti and Chaitanya. Hmm. In a hymn to Rama, Narada said, O Rama, you are Sita and Sita is Bhagavati. You are Brahma and Sita is Brahmani. You are Indra and she is Indrani. You are Narayana and she is Sita, she is Lakshmi. O Rama, you are the symbol of all that is masculine and Sita is the embodiment of all that is feminine. Yeah. Sir, what is the spirit form of God like? With form, pure spirit. The spirit itself it is projecting in and through uh, with bodily existence. Nama, Rupa, Guna. Saguna Sakara. Hmm. Nama Rupa. Sakara is a Rupa. Hmm. 
the unmanifest is manifesting with name and form. What is the spirit? Hmm. Sir, what is the spirit form of God? Sri Ramakrishna reflected a moment and said softly, Shall I tell you what it is like? It is like water. One understands all this through spiritual discipline. Now it's like water. Spirit form. He's asking for spirit form. Spirit form, when we say spirit, doesn't have form. It is like telling the word uh, love, love form, for in the form of love, in the form of air. Air doesn't have form. In the form of, uh, God came in the form of wind. So when we say patriotism, these are abstract nouns which doesn't have a form and we can associate with it a particular form but it doesn't have a form by itself but when we use it gives meaning he loves me when I use the term he loves me he is a good patriot when I am using it when it is using it is taking shape when it is independent it has no shape like water. Water, if you put in a glass, it takes the form of a glass. If you put in a mm, pot, it takes the form of pot. If you make a glass uh, structure, in the empty structure, in that if you put in that particular shape it takes, it can be Rama, it can be Krishna, anything. In whatever you present it, it takes that form. It itself doesn't have form, like love. He loves me when I say, he doesn't love me. And all these are taking different forms. So like that is the God is formless and it has form also. It takes the form in the beginning. It takes the form of the whatever you think of God. Om Shanti 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 Hari Om Tat Sat Shri Ramakrishna Arpanamastur